If you're here, I reckon you've got one of these five problems. You can't warp stabilize, you can't drag or drop your audio onto your timeline, you can't unnest, your media is offline, or you've got a size mismatch. If you've got any of those problems, we're gonna solve them right now. Hey, and welcome to Digi Pro Tips. If you're new here, then give us a subscribe, like that button, write a comment, because I'm gonna show you some tips that are really gonna help you out here. Talking specifically Premiere Pro, and the most common problems that you'll get in Premiere Pro. If you want to skip ahead, then head to here for Can't Warp Stabilize. Head to here for audio or video not dragging onto your timeline. Head to here for Can't Unnest. Head to here for Media Offline. And head to here for size mismatch. Okay, let's kick things off. You've got a shaky shot and you want to use warp stabilizer. So you've dragged your footage into your timeline and you've gone to your effects panel and you've got warp stabilizer, banged it on there. But for some reason it's, it's saying it won't do it. It just won't do it. What do we do? Okay, well let's have a look and I'll show you. Okay, so I've got my shot here. It's in my timeline and I want to put a warp stabilizer on it. Look what happens when I do that. Warp stabilizer requires clip dimensions to match sequence fixed by nesting. What? What? What does that mean? Well, a nest is kind of like a pre-comp. If you're in, if you know After Effects, then you'll know what pre-comps are. Effectively, you are putting your footage inside of another sequence that matches the timeline settings that you have then Warp Stabilizer will work. The reason why is because my sequence settings for this are a 720p timeline, whereas my footage is 1080p. So what I need to do is I need to nest it by right clicking nest, and I will call it cliffs nest. And then I can drag my warps, then I can drag my warp stabilizer on top and bam, it works. Yes! There is another instance where warp stabilizer won't work, and that is if I put a speed effect on this clip and try to put warp stabilizer on it, it won't work. You can't have warp stabilizer and speed effects on the same clip. Um, you'd also need to nest that to have a warp stabilizer on there. So set your speed first, then nest, then stick your stabilizer on top, and you'll be golden. Okay, the next common problem that you might face is that your audio or your video won't drag onto your timeline. Yeah, that's, that's annoying, isn't it? What do we do? Let's have a look. So I've got here a lovely shot of a historic street in Canterbury, England. And what I want to do is I want to drag it onto my timeline. So that's how it should normally happen. But what if this happens? Uh, that's annoying. Where's my audio? I know there's audio on there. I can hear it when I play it back. Why is it not? Why is that not working? Well, it's all to do with this little A1 and V1 here to make sure that your track is activated. You just literally need to make sure that, that is on, it is blue, and then you can bring your footage into your timeline and you will have both your video and your audio. The same goes for the video. Make sure that V1 is activated, otherwise that will happen. It's really simple, you just need to make sure that your patching is activated and on. Make sure it's blue next to, so that you have your patch and then your track activated for where you want your video to go and you'll have both your video and your audio. Okay, next problem is unnesting. So earlier we talked about nesting something and um, so you can stick a warp saver eyes on it. What if I want to unnest that? I want to take the footage out that I've already nested. Um, that's a little tricky because there isn't actually an unnest function. What you have to do is you have to go into that nest, copy your footage and put it back into your original timeline. I'll show you. So I have this nest here of the arches in Canterbury and I just want to take that footage out of there because I don't want, I don't need it in a nest anymore. There is no unnest function. I can make a new nest, um, but there is no unnest function. 
So what I have to do is I have to go into that nest, I have to copy the footage, and then I need to bring it back into the timeline by pasting it. That really is the only way, unless you've recently just made a nest and you can undo a couple of steps without getting rid of many, much of your work, um, that, could, that could work, but that really is the only way to unnest something, uh, unfortunately. Adobe, are you listening? We need that function. Next problem, and this is a golden one. This happens to so many people. The next problem is when your media is offline. You got something on OneDrive, you transferred it to another, or you had it on your laptop, you transferred it to another computer, or for whatever reason, it can't find your media even though you know you have it. And it shows you a screen like this. Ah, the red screen. The red screen of death. Yeah, it's horrible, it's horrible. But usually it's very simple to fix. All we need to do is either go to our bin or go to our shot in our timeline. We can, if you have a lot of shots here, you can go Command A and highlight them all and just right click and choose Link Media. That will bring you to this screen, which shows you all the shots that are offline in your timeline or in your project as a whole. And what I like to do is I like to use Finder uh, to find these shots rather than the media browser inside of Premiere Pro. I just find it a little easier. Um, and I hit locate. It will take me to the last place that it knew where the shot was. Uh, and because I have offlined it here, that's where it is. But basically you can then locate anywhere that you know that shot is find it and make sure that you have display only exact name matches and that will find the exact shot that you're looking for. Um, and then you can click on that shot because it will be the only one highlighted and click open. And bam, your shot's back. There we go. I was lucky. Um, if you've grabbed a project from a different hard drive but you've copied all the media over or you've done a media manage and copied the new shots over to a different location or renamed your bins or whatever it may be that you've somehow unlinked the media, that is the way that you link it. It's really simple and usually it's not a hassle. Okay, fifth and final common problem that you have in Premiere is when you've got a timeline of a certain size but your footage isn't the right size. Now, this is quite a problem when you're first starting out, um, especially if you're working with 4K footage and a 1080p timeline, or you've got mixed media, you've got some shots that are 1080p and some shots that are 4K. <sighs> what can you do? Well, there isn't a lot you can do when you've got 1080p footage in a 4K timeline, apart from scaling up. But with 4K footage and a 1080p timeline, you can quite easily scale down and preserve that shot's detail. So let me just show you what I mean. So I've got a timeline here and it's a 4K timeline, uh, but this shot is a slow motion 1080p shot. So what I need to do is I need to scale it up to match the timeline. Um, and the only way that I can do that is to highlight the shot that I want, go to the effects control panel for that shot, and I'm just gonna scale this 200% because 1080p is half the scale of 4K, and there you have it. Your shot is now the right size for your timeline. Usually, when you've got slow motion footage, it's gonna be 1080p in a 4K timeline because you've shot the rest of your A roll in 4K and your B roll in 1080p. That's not a problem because not many people notice, especially on a YouTube compressed version of your video, you will get away with it. Um, obviously, if you can shoot slow motion in 4K, then absolutely go for it. But this is usually what you're gonna have to do when you're shooting slow-mo B-roll. Okay, there we have it. That was all five, that's 10, all five of your problems solved in Premiere Pro. And I hope you found that useful. If you wanna see more, then hit that subscribe button, give us a like or a comment, and we'll be back next time.